Go, go, go. Wow, I can't believe it got out of there in one piece. Are you okay? Are you hurt? Yeah, I'm, I think I'm fine. I'm not hurt. Okay, this is crazy, but it just dawned on me. We have officially bugged out. This is a bug out situation. I can't believe okay, it. Okay, Dad. Are you happy now? Because all your dreams come true. Of course. This is awesome. This is what I've trained for. This is the moment I've dreamed of. Yeah, but Dad, there's one problem. We bugged out with barely even any gear. How are we going to survive? Yeah, so that's a good point. We are low on gear, but trust me. I got the solution. I got us covered. I've been preparing for this for years. Let's go. Okay, so it was about 10 months ago that I prepped and buried the survival cash. And I'll be honest with you, I really didn't want to wait out the entire duration of the year, but curiosity got the best of me. So we had to pack up the gear, head out to the shelter site and see if we could locate this damn thing, get it out of the ground and get out of there undetected. In previous videos, I've detailed this entire process from the prepping to the packing, to the planning, to the burial, and also identifying the three different survival caches that most people might want to employ in their survival strategy. So if you haven't seen those videos yet, feel free to check out the pin post and description for those links. In the meantime, here's a quick recap. Now you may wonder, what is the point of all of this? Why even make a survival cache? Because you have to invest time, money, effort, and indeed a bit of risk because you have to be prepared never to see this gear again. So what problem am I trying to solve here? Well, simply put, there may be many reasons why you might find yourself in dire need of a backup. Big Brother might declare that your precious survival gear is now illegal. Or maybe you have to flee your current position so fast that all you have on you is your EDC. Or maybe you want to cut away from your bug out bag and put some of that gear in survival cash. So overall, there's tons of reasons why you might want to work a level of redundancy of this nature into your survival strategy. So it's fairly simple to just pack a box and bury it somewhere. However, it's a bit of a different matter to actually recover that cash after nearly a year. The landscape may have changed. The cash may have shifted from its original position. Or, God forbid, maybe animals have smelled it, dug it up, or maybe humans have actually discovered your cache. These were just a few thoughts racing through my head as my partner and I moved through the forest to the location. Once on site, it only took about five minutes to find the landmark, and then I broke out my knife and I probed the ground a few times and immediately hit that container. At that point in time, I was definitely thankful that I had not done a real burial like I had done back in Tennessee, where I buried it like six feet underground. That was pretty retarded, and needless to say, how, no matter how much I dug, I never did find that survival cache. It is my opinion that short-term caches do not need a deep burial, but rather a shallow one that's going to enable quick recovery without having to drag along a shovel, a tarp, and all that kind of crap, right? Because that process is just time-consuming, and the less time that I spend on site, the better. Thanks to the shallow burial, you see how quickly we uncover that cache, conceal the dig site, and then evacuate on a different path than we came in on. Once we were a good distance from the site, I cracked open the seal and opened the cache. Everything was just like I packed it. No damage, no water, no moisture, no rust. Everything is literally looking just like the way it looked when I first originally closed up the container and sealed it back here on this workbench. I went ahead and loaded an extra mag with some of that nice looking brand new ammo. And then we transferred the rest of the contents over to a 5.11 packable bag and got the heck out of there. And as we were leaving, I was faced with a hypothetical question. What should I really do with that container if this is a real SHTF situation? Should I just go ahead and rebury it after I've emptied out the contents? Or God forbid I arrive on site and I don't have anything and I'm just stuck with a container. What do I do then? Right? So yeah, maybe it's a good idea to move the container to some other area and conceal it. I don't know. What do you guys think? So yeah, I would call that operation a complete and total success. 
we got in quick, we got out quick, and we were completely undetected in that entire process. And that is exactly what the original mission goal was. Now, beyond that, an added bonus was being able to spend some quality father-son time with my son. He had a blast. I mean, what 10-year-old doesn't love digging in some dirt and playing in the woods? And in that process, he learned some practical, real-world survival knowledge, which I feel might come in handy in the future. However, the real question here is, how does the food taste? How does the water taste? In what condition is everything that was actually in that container? So let's find out. So yeah, there was a bit of variety in here. I'm not gonna start cooking food, but you know, we got some mac and cheese here. We got some Grammys oatmeal. And this stuff stays good for 25 years. The packages, you know, the packaging is not broken. So I'm sure that's good to go. What I am interested in is trying some of this emergency purified drinking water. Check it out. Never actually had this yet. So let's see how it is. Yeah, guess what? It tastes like water. Perfect. I mean, absolutely perfect. I love it. So yeah, that is that is good to go. This is by SOS Food Labs. And is there like expiration date on this? Expiration date is 623. I have a feeling like this would stay good for a little bit longer than right now. <laughs> but anyways, the water is good to go. So I'm happy about that. Now, look, I packed in here some Nature Valley crunchy oats and honey granola bars. I love these things, but, you know, I have a feeling that they might be a little stale. I don't know. Let's find out. All right, here, here's the test. Hey, hey, okay. That literally tastes like it just came off the shelf in Walmart. Hmm. Good to go. Here, let's just have a quick look at this ammo. This is uh, just a cheap box of Blazer FMJ 9 mil. Look at that. Perfect. Everything is good to go. Yep. Happy about that. What else we got going on here? We got more granola bars, whole buttload more water. Oh, and I got my knife, which I've already actually cracked this open and looked at it, but because uh, I just couldn't resist. And this bad boy went in this gun storage bag. So I was, you know, very confident that it was going to be in good shape. And sure enough, it is. I love this knife. I was actually looking for it and then realized that I had it in the uh, cache. But custom sheath on this more, super nice. And when you pull it out and look at it, stainless steel blade looking excellent. No corrosion, no rust. No damage. Everything is literally just like it was when I originally packed it, which is a whole thing. Now, with that being said, mistakes were definitely made. Let's go through those right now. Starting with the first and biggest mistake tactically was, yeah, I know this wasn't a real world situation, but it was a training exercise and I needed to treat it more seriously instead of just barging into the cash site with no overwatch. I didn't step back for any moment and like try to observe the location to make sure there wasn't any humans around. There literally never is anybody out there, but it's at one time where you think, yeah, nobody's out here that somebody shows up. So I definitely should have just gone barging in there. I could have just held back a little bit further, observed the area, and then went in when I realized that there wasn't anybody there. So that probably would have been a good move. And then secondly, why in the hell did I not put my packable 5.11 backpack in the container? I swear to God, I did that. But then I went back and I looked at the original footage. I'm like, man, I didn't do that. But it just makes sense to have that backpack in there because like I said, just in case you were to show up there with just your everyday carry on you, hey, listen, you're going to be good to go. Granted, it's literally just a bag with some straps, so it's not exactly going to be too comfortable, but it's better than nothing. Next, let's go ahead and talk upgrades and maybe some ways I can do this different in the future. And the first one is just to throw a damn poncho in there. It takes up no space and it just makes sense to have some form of shelter. Now, secondly, since I have that knife in there, why not throw maybe a canteen in there? I could put a Sawyer Mini in there, maybe a hydration bag, a Cenog bag, something like that. So I have the knife and then I have some way to purify water. Not a bad idea. And there is a large water supply, literally like about a quarter mile away from that cash site. So that would just make sense. 
And then in regards to the food, I don't think there's really any need to pack this type of food in there. I mean, the type of cash that this is, I'm not gonna really, it, it, it's not one that's stowed around my house or an area with, you know, like a base camp or anything like that at all. So the food that I need to have in here is just stuff that I can just eat on the go, right? This is really just a resupply cache on my way to another resupply cache on the way to the base camp, right? So um, yeah, in hindsight, I don't know really why I packed this stuff, but we're gonna replace this with some MREs, maybe some peanut butter, maybe some honey, maybe some Skittles, you know, a little more variety in there, but definitely there's no, there, I have nothing to cook with, right? So there's no reason to have in there. So a little more food variety would be a good idea. I think I'll make those changes. And then finally, why not set up a trail cam for Overwatch on that site? And I got that idea from Ranger Fieldcraft. He has a really great video on how he handles caching. I'm gonna go ahead and link that up there and I get that maybe to pop up right there and you guys can check out how he does it. There's only like a few different ways to do it and we basically do it the same way, except he set up a trail cam, which I mean, duh, I should have done that. I've done that before in the past with some stealth shelter sites and it definitely turned out to be pretty handy. Now, to be clear, there's two different types of trail cams that you can employ. The first one requires you to go out in the field and pull that card and then come home, look at the card and be like, okay, you know, I see somebody here stealing my crap or I see animals tearing it up and there's nothing I can do about it now because I'm screwed. But the other option would be that you would have a remote monitoring that's set up on Wi-Fi, right? And I've done this before, it's like $5 a month for this card. And right from the comfort of my house, I can just sit there and I can pull up the app and I can check on the cache. I, I can even like um, turn on a spotlight. And then I can also even like, it, like issue a verbal voice command through it. And it's all motion detect and all that kind of crap. So there's a few different ways to do that. But Ranger Fieldcraft really has a great setup and the way he presented his cache video and the way he gets it done is pretty sweet. So I strongly suggest checking him out and just checking out that channel in general. He is obviously a well-experienced uh, dude who really knows what he's talking about. Now, what is next? Well, the next move is obviously just to go ahead and build a complete bug out bad cash because that's the direction that this is moving in. And I feel a lot more comfortable about doing that and investing that money and time in that process because now I know that how I seal up these containers is good to go. I understand my process. I know where I need to tweak things and fix things. And just overall, it's been a good experience. And mainly what I always try to do is seek progress over perfection. So I start out real small. I'm not trying to get it perfect right out the gate. Actually, I'll never get it perfect, but I can get pretty damn close if I keep putting in the work and the incremental process. So I'll keep you guys up to speed on the bug out bag cash as that whole build goes on. And I guess, meanwhile, what's your opinion on this process, right? Because everything is going to be different based on your location. The soil is gonna be different probably than here in Florida. Here, it's super easy to conceal and dig. Maybe in Canada, it's not. Or maybe if you're uh, like digging in Missouri red clay, it's not going to be that easy. Maybe if you plant something and then the ground freezes over, that might be a problem. Or, you know, there's a billion different things to consider. So the best thing that I could suggest would be to start out small like what I've done. Don't invest a ton of money into it, but build a, build a reasonable cache, build a real world cache that you would actually use in an emergency situation, find somewhere to plant it, and then just kind of go through the process, evolve and get better yourself and if you're already doing survival caches then my god you are way ahead of the game and um, i applaud you for that so with that being said hope you guys enjoyed the video i'd love to hear your thoughts on the caching process the protocols and some of your favorite things to cache see you in the next one